guys, NickMock007 here again, and thanks to all my new subscribers, and thanks to everyone who's been leaving likes and comments. Um, I really appreciate it, and encourage everyone to make a little effort at uh, at least giving a thumbs up if you enjoy the video, uh, if you don't want to leave a comment. It's actually really helpful for me. Um, but enough of the begging, so let's actually get on to the last part of this series. Today we're going to talk about dechlorinators. Now this is what really matters most for us. Also, stay tuned though if you use or are considering using one of the RODI systems, as I actually found some information that I didn't know about, um, so I think is less known. Uh, Alright, so how do we actually go about removing chloramine from water? Well, typically, most of us are going to rely on chemical reducing agents, which is um, often referred to as a, a chemical reduction. There are two main ways to remove chloramine from tap water. The first is through the use of inorganic reducing agents. Uh, most common one is thiosulfate. Now, thiosulfate is an inorganic chemical that is typically dissolved in water, uh, usually a sodium salt. Now, when it's added to water containing chloramine, a reaction takes place that destroys the chloramine. Now, the electrochemistry of sulfur compounds can be complicated and is certainly over my head, um, but different researchers report different products of this reaction. Um, which were actually extrapolated from reactions with chlorine itself, not chloramine. Now some of these products include um, sulfate, uh, elemental sulfur, and uh, tetrathionate. Um, if I mispronounce any of this, I apologize. Uh, I'm not a chemist, as I said in one of these previous videos, and I'll try to put the names of everything up there. So some of this is going to depend on the conditions, including the pH and the relative amounts of compounds present. Now, thiosulfate works equally well for dechlorinating free chlorine in fresh and salt water, but the ammonia that is produced as a result of the reaction is still toxic. So, thiosulfate alone is not usually adequate for eliminating toxicity from chloramine. Other products, such as hydroxymethanosulfonate, um, which is a known uh, ammonia binder, can be used to treat chlorinated water both because they break down chloramine and bind up the ammonia. Now, the reaction of ammonia with hydroxymethanosulfonate is pretty complicated, um, but possibly involves decomposition to formaldehyde and reformation to uh, amino methanosulfonate. Um, now, uh, this is the simplified reaction and is mostly over my head, but uh, for the folks out there that understand that kind of stuff, there it is. Now, the reaction uh, of hydroxymethanosulfonate with chloramine or chlorine is even more complicated, and the products that are formed have really not been well established. All right, a brief interlude. So I know there are a lot of dechlorinators out there, and mostly they all do the same or pretty similar things. I'm going to focus on Seachem Prime, uh, not as an endorsement or criticism of the product, but simply because I use it, and I think it's the most widely one used of, uh, of all of them out there. So now, according to the uh, MSDS, the Material Safety Data Sheet uh, that's available on Seachem's website, um, Seachem is actually a bit guarded about what it uses, but if you look it up, it says Prime contains a proprietary blend of uh, comp excuse me, complex hydrosulfite salts. I botched that pronunciation, but again, there it is. So, uh, are these dechlorinators like Prime useful? Do they actually eliminate all toxicity from chloramine? And are they creating other toxic compounds? Now, when I started the series, I thought the answer was definitely positive for all these questions, but now I'm actually not so sure. What I can tell you is that I'm sure using them is better than not using them at all if there is chloramine in your water. Now, is the toxicity eliminated for even the most sensitive invertebrates, especially for saltwater tanks? Well, maybe not. So if this is a major concern, then you might want to consider other ways to remove chlorine and chloramine, which we'll talk about shortly. Okay. So what about removing chloramine using activated carbon, i.e. the Brita Pitcher kind of method? Uh, well, no one's using a Brita Pitcher, of course, but lots of folks use activated carbon filters, uh, including people like me who have a whole house filter, and folks who use RODI systems. So it's actually a two-step process. The carbon catalytically breaks down the chloramine uh, into ammonia, chloride, and nitrogen gas. But just as we now know for chemicals like thiosulfate, the product includes ammonia, which is not bound significantly by activated carbon. So consequently, the treatment of water with activated carbon will need to be followed up by some method of eliminating the ammonia. 
So this should answer the question of, is activated carbon sufficient for eliminating chloramine? But in the case of reverse osmosis deionizing systems, RODI, RODI, whatever you want to call them, um, carbon is usually just part of the pre-filtration of the system. So the ammonia is then partially removed um, by the reverse osmosis system. The extent of the removal of the RO membrane actually depends on pH. But at pHs of 7.5 or lower, um, the reverse osmosis membrane will remove ammonia from 1.4 parts per million of monochloramine to less than 0.1 parts per million of ammonia. The DI resin then removes the residual ammonia to really insignificant levels. But if you have chloramine in your tap water and you're relying on an RODI system, there are a couple of important things to make sure you're uh, to do to make sure you're adequately removing the chloramine. So first, the carbon cartridge becomes less useful over time. All right, and two, the sediment uh, cartridges should re should be replaced as soon as the pressure drops significantly, even if the RODI water uh, RODI water is still being produced at a reasonable rate, or even if the purity is measured by uh, TDS. So I thought that was interesting. Now, in conclusion. Chloramine in tap water should be a significant concern for us, and while it's well suited, uh, while it is well suited for disinfection of the water supply, it's a potential toxin for our aquariums. So we have two options, uh, two options. Excuse me, an inorganic reducing agent combined with uh, an additive that binds up ammonia, like Prime does, or an RODI system. <clears throat> but how do you even know if you have chloramine in your water? Well. I think it should be simple. Just go to your local water uh, services website and check out the reports that they make public. All right, so that concludes my series on chloramines in the aquarium. Thanks to everyone who sat through all three of these. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll explore next, but uh, I hope you'll join me in the, uh, in the future again. As always, please, please consider subscribing to my channel and taking that monumental effort to hit the like button. Uh, I know it's tough. Well, unless you didn't like the video, in which case, go for it, hit the dislike button. But either way, leave me a comment so I know what you did or didn't like about this, and I will uh, try to change it in the future. I really do read all the comments, and I try to answer questions, though, not always in a timely manner. So, thanks again for watching today, and I will see you in a future video. Hope everyone's enjoying the Olympics.